to your first tutorial video for Poly 399. Uh, as you can see on my screen here, what you've got is a list of everything that we're going to get done this week. No, don't be intimidated. It looks like a long list, but it's actually going to be more straightforward, I think, uh, than what it might seem here. Uh, we're going to show you how to open up Stata. Uh, we're going to show you how to turn on something called a log file. This will be really important because it'll show, it just gets the computer to record everything that happens when you're in Stata. And so if there's ever an issue or something happens and you don't quite understand what's going on, uh, if you send the log file to me or to one of the TAs, then this will really help us um, help you as the uh, figure out what, what had happened. Uh, state has got a bunch of windows in them. We'll show you what they all are. Uh, we'll show you how to open and save this thing called a do file. Um, we're going to show you how to open and use something called the data viewer and the data editor. This week you'll spend a lot of time in the data editor. Normally what will happen is that you'll spend a lot of time with do files, but this week we're just going to get you into this so that you get used to working with variables and seeing what they are. So we'll show you how to set up variables, how we'll, something called value labels, how to get data into Stata. Usually you won't have to do this, but it's good to know how you save a data file, how to run a frequency, how to save your findings, and then how to load everything up uh, onto D2L so that we can see all of the great work that you did. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, what we need to do is to take this PDF of uh, information about some electoral districts and get it into Stata. So I've got this PDF file. It's dealing with a number of electoral districts. I've got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten electoral districts uh, in 2015. Uh, they're all from British Columbia. And so you can see I've got the electoral district here with their name, and then you can see a bunch of other information. So the number of votes that, the proportion of votes rather, that the Conservative Party of Canada got in 2015, the Liberals, the New Democrats, the Greens, uh, the level of turnout, which party won in 2011, which party won in 2008, who's the incumbent, and then some, a bunch of information specifically about uh, the uh, like characteristics of the district. Uh, what we can see here is that we've got some information that's in words and we've got some information that's in numbers. This is important to flag right out of the gate because computers can do stuff with numbers but they can't really do a lot of things with words. And so this is just something to like note right out of the gate that sometimes we're stuck using words and sometimes we will do different things um, with things that look like words to get the computer to think that they're actually numbers. This will make sense in a moment. Okay, so how do I get all of this into uh, the stats package? So, or into the stats program. So here, this is where my Stata is. I'm using Stata 14. Uh, if you were using the lab, you'll use Stata 13. Uh, that's the one that the University of Calgary's Arts Labs has. If you've downloaded your version of Stata, it will be newer than mine, but all of them should look roughly similar. So I'm just going to start this. I'm a Mac user, so it bounces. Okay, and then this is what I get. So in this window here, this big one that's most of the like left-hand side, of the screen. This is something called the results window. And so here you can see it's state is telling me a bunch of things about itself. Um, you can see that I have paid to use this, things along these lines, right? Uh, this is where all of the information about the analysis and things, that's, this is where this is going to show up. Uh, if you look over to the top right, this is where information about our actual data will show up in here as well. So right now it's empty because we don't have a data set that's open. Uh, and we have no data in here. So, but if we had variables, this is where the name of the variable and the label would go. The name is the name that the computer knows to call the variable. Labels are useful for us. Labels tell us like what the variable is actually really about. And this will make sense in a moment, why we, why we do it this way. Um, in this part here, this is where you can see properties of the 
variable. So if you if there was something here and we clicked on it, we would get a bunch of information in there. And then over here, you see something called command. This is where we can type uh, information in um, to tell the computer what to do. Uh, so this would be a, if I did that, it would be like, what? I don't know what that is. This is what an error looks like in Stata, by the way. And one of the things you can do is click on this little like highlighted blue thing. And it'll say, uh, gives me information about the, the content of the error. Uh, this is not a particularly useful error message. It's just like, I don't know what you told me to do, uh, which is fair given what I just typed in there. Yeah. Okay. Other helpful windows that you need to know about, it's something called a do file. So what I want you to do is, um, if you do file new do file, uh, you get something like this. When we're actually working with a data set and typing out a whole bunch of commands, we'll do it in this, right? And then we can do some work in here and we'll ask the computer to run some work and all of that will show up in the results window here. So most of the time, for most of the weeks, we're going to be working in a do file. Uh, this week we're not doing that, but I just want you to know most of the time what you're going to be doing is opening a do file. So you can do that by file, new, do file. Uh, you can also do it by clicking on do file editor and poof, there I have a new do file. Okay. So that's how you would get a do file. And we'll walk you through that every time that you need to use one. The next thing I want you to do is to set the log. And so what the log does is it literally maps and records everything that shows up in the results window. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can do file log begin. And here it's telling me to uh, like save the file. And so what I would do is I would save it using this following format. You're gonna want your surname. So for me, that's Thomas. And then the course, Poly399, the tutorial, which tutorial it is. And then if you want, you can put the date on it. That's what I've got. Uh, yeah, so you would put the date for whatever your tutorial was and that would be fine. I was working on something similar with this earlier. So I'm just gonna click save and replace that. And now I've got this thing here. So it's saying, here's my log. It's telling me where the computer pathway is for me to get to this. And that's that. Okay. I think another way you can do this is to just click the log button. And then it also tells you. So now I can say I can close, I can suspend, I can try to view it, things along those lines. So you can always get at that through the file menu this way or through this shortcut that's up there. Okay. Let me just check my notes here. So already we've uh, like opened up Stata, we've turned on the log file, and we've almost identified every window in Stata, uh, but not quite all of them. So another, the one that we're going to be spending a lot of time in here is a, the data editor. So normally if we had a data set open, we would look at the data browser, and then we could actually see all the data that was in there, but um, we don't have any data in there. We have to put put it in. And so this is why I want to open up the data editor. So this is where you can manually enter data into a program like Stata. So I have to somehow get whatever is all in this PDF into this data set here, or into Stata here. So how would I go about doing that? I mean, one thing you could do is just start by taking, I'm going to make it so I can see both of my window or like some of this information there. Okay, so I want to figure out how to get electoral district into the computer program here. Uh, one way that you could start to do it is to just go in and type electoral district and hit enter and see what happens. So. Right away, there's a couple of things that I want you to see. If you look at the variables here, you'll notice the name isn't electoral district. It's variable one or like VAR for variable one. And there's no label. And this is in red. And notice where variable one shows up. It shows up in this very top column, not unlike here, right? Uh, and then it's giving me this content in red. Now, if I look at the log file, it's saying set observations as one. So it's saying set the, literally it's like, I have a single observation. My number of observations was zero. Now it's one and it's generated uh, 
a string, like, so it's, string means word in Stata. And so whenever you see string in Stata, it just means words, not numbers. And it's saying it generated this in one. And if you're sitting there saying, what? Um, all it's doing is it's like, it didn't, if I, if the goal for me was to like make this as my variable, I have not succeeded. Basically, I've got a variable with electoral district as an observation, as opposed to the electoral district variable. So how do I fix this? I want to go over to properties here and I'm going to click on the variable name. And here, I'm just going to double click on that because now I can start to edit it. So instead of calling it variable one, I'm going to call it electoral district. And I want to see if it'll let me do that. And it won't let me do that. Now, why won't it let me do that? One of the things, the naming conventions that Stata has is that it doesn't want spaces. So you can do capitals, you can do some special characters, um, but you're not allowed to have spaces. So if I do election electoral, sorry, underscore district, I wonder if that will work as a new name. Poof, there it is. So I can name this variable electoral district, but I need to have an underscore for that space. You could do this any number of ways. Um, you could just do electoral district without the space, one big word. You could just do it ed for electoral district. Uh, for the sake of being like obvious, I will just keep it as electoral district. And there, so that's its name. Or you could still always do variable one if you wanted to do it that way. But usually I like to have more substantive names so that it's clear like what the variable actually is. Okay, so that's its name. The name is what the computer looks for and what the computer calls it. Labels are substantive titles that we use. So labels are like, we allowed, we're allowed to have like words and things um, with a lot fewer conventions for the computer um, because this is where we give ourselves information about what the variable is. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna call it electoral district. Oh, and I can see I've erred on this one, it's election. I'm gonna fix that to make that electoral district. Okay, so these things seem super straightforward. Um, electoral district, electoral district. Now, you'll note that the type here is a string. STR means string. This means that for the computer, it's just letters and it knows that it can't really do much of anything with them. And then for the rest of them, like you'll here you can see there's one variable, there's one observation, and like that's kind of, you don't need to know tons of details about all the other stuff that's in here. Um, now, if I wanted to go, if I look at this now, my observation here shouldn't be electoral district. Like that's not helpful for me because that doesn't match the um, like electoral district is the title of the variable. It's the name of the variable. It's not the actual observation that I want. The observations that I want are these 10 things, right? So I can just uh, type in uh, Abbotsford and then there we go. I could do, and then you just type in the rest of them. And you'll notice my observations there, it went from, I've got one variable and now I've got two observations. Uh, I do a Delta Richmond East. I've got three observations, Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca, there we are. Kelowna, country. Nanaimo, Cochin, Saanich, Gulf Islands, oopsies, uh, Vancouver Center, oopsies, uh, Vancouver Kingsway, and Victoria. Okay, so one variable, 10 observations, and poof, there's that first part of the, getting this whole document into Stata. That part is done. Easy peasy, right? Okay. So now that we're done our first variable, how do we add the second one? I mean, one thing that you might be able to do is to just try to type something in here, like we did before. And that works, certainly. Uh, but now we've got variable two and it's a string as well. And so the problem is like it's, 
It's not what we want a number for this particular one. So here, uh, I'm actually going to delete this. Uh, well, no, I'll keep that there, CPC mode. So how am I gonna change this? Variable two, I need to give this, I don't want it to be variable two, I want it to be CPC. Uh, CPC vote. I'm just going to leave that without a space there. Okay, so here's the kicker. Now I need this to be like not a string, a type. Uh, but like it doesn't immediately, I don't know how to change this to a number. Like can I just type in number? It says invalid string type. Um, can I say percentage? No, I can't. So this is not, this is not great for me. Uh, how can I go about doing this that's a different way? I do want to apply the changes to the previous cell just to make that go away. Okay, so what happens if I double click on this? That doesn't work. Uh, I am now appear to be totally stuck. I'm not actually stuck. What I want to do is to just, I want to get rid of this. Uh, is there a way that I can do this? There is. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the command window here and just say drop CPC vote because I want to drop it from the data set. I don't want it to be in the, be there anymore. It's not doing anything useful for me. So I just go into the command window and I say drop CPC vote. I hit enter and it went away. Good. Let's try another way of trying to make this. I'm going to double click on this little orange box up here. So that like the same header, like the top title bar, I'm going to double click there and see if I can get something different. Okay, so I'll double click that. And look at this, it says generate, create a new variable. I want to create a new variable, this is good. So my new variable name, I'll just put in CPC vote there. And now I'm looking at variable type and it says, I have options that are confusing. So I've got float, double, long, int, byte, and then str. Now str stands for string, we've seen that before, but what about the rest of these? Um, what do I do with them? One way that you can figure this out that's going to be really useful is to go to the help menu. So you want to go help, state a command, and then you just type in the confusing thing. So I'm going to type in float and see what comes up. And what happens in that help state a command when you type this stuff in is that you get this like access to this great help menu that tells you a bunch of things about something. So here, uh, it says it's function, it's programming function. Uh, this seems confusing. And it says, although you may store your numeric variables as a byte, int, long, float, or double, Stata converts all numbers to double before forming any calculations. Okay, so for my purposes, this tells me that float is a number. What if I were to do int? What does that tell me? This entry provides a quick reference for all the data types allowed by Stata. So this is telling me bytes and like the min and the max, uh, int, float, double. Some of these are bigger than others. All this is telling me basically is that float is a number. And so for my purposes, I'm okay keeping this as a float because I just want it to be a number, right? Uh, I don't want to specify anything. What I want to do is I want to fill with missing data. And I'll explain why in a moment. So I want to fill the new variable with missing data. And I want to add it at the end of the data set. That's literally this column here, like the end of it. So I'm just going to click Submit. And now you can see I've got this entirely new variable. Missing data here means that the period is just that I have given Stata no data for this yet. So there's no information in there yet which is great. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And what's interesting, it says the variable you specified already exists. Uh, when I click OK, it's like telling Stata to do it again. And so it's like, I just did it. I don't want to do it again. So I'll just click OK and then click Cancel and see my variable is made here. So now what I can do is I can go in and I can add the information I want. So I see that there are percentages over in my CPC vote. I'm going to convert those to decimals just to keep it easy. So 0.65. 0.36. You can see with the cursor, I just click the cursor here and then I can get up in there 0 0.54, 0 0.40. And it's made that 0 0.4 if that's fine for today. 0 0.58, 0 0.3, 0 0.57 rather, 0 0.38, 0 0.36, 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.28, 0 0.29, 0 0.30, 0 0.31, 0 0.32, 0 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 0.38, 0 
0.28 and then 0.24. Yes, I want those changes. Okay, so now that second column is done. Great. Uh, I can do the same thing with LPC vote. I'll just double click that. It'll be LPC vote and it remembers what I did last time so I don't have to change anything and I'll just click OK and there it is. Then I've got NDP vote, remembers my preferences, there it is. Uh, I've got Green Party of Canada vote, there it is. Oop, there. And then I'm going to put in turnout and same thing. There it is. Okay, so when you're doing this, you will then go and fill out all of this information. I'm going to make this move over a little bit like that. Okay, so you can see more of uh, what's going on. So here you can see I've got six variables. So add I, as I add in a variable in like this properties here, that starts to change. And then you can see I've got, um, yeah, some words and some numbers. And then when you do this, you'll put all of these numbers from the PDF into, um, into those variables. I want to take some time here with uh, these next ones, the 2011 winner, the 2008 winner, and the incumbent. This is one of these instances where it looks like we have numbers, but what we really need, oh no, what we look like we have words. We totally have words. We've got the words conservative, NDP, uh, liberal, none, uh, green, things along those lines. Uh, we have words, but we want these to be numbers. And the reason why we want these to be numbers is we want to be able to um, get the computer to do some statistics with this. Uh, like in some ways, we kind of don't care about the names so much, um, but even then we could just each give these a number. We could just be like, uh, we could create a different um, variable that was just like the district number. Elections Canada does have these, so we could include that if we wanted, and then this would just be for our information. But here, if these are all words and we keep them as words, then we can't get the computer to do anything with them. Like it's going to really hamper our ability to do work. And so what we need to do is to figure out a way to be able to make these numbers, um, even though what we're really interested in, in is the word that's associated with the number. And so for me, one of the best ways to do this is to just give each party a number. We can give any party any number that we want. It's the number is just a placeholder for the party. Uh, it's usually a good idea to not get too creative with this. Like you want it to be straightforward so you remember what you did. So here I'm going to create um, the 2011 winner. Uh, it's a float variable, all these other sorts of things. I just want it to be that. So I'm going to start with that. Oh, what's this? Here's an error I have. It says the variable name that you specified is invalid. Uh, I think Stata doesn't like it when you start a variable name with a number. So I'm going to change this around to winner 2011. Start it with a letter for the name. And then uh, I've got, we'll see if that works. And lo and behold, it does. Okay. So I'm looking at my 2011 winner, and I've got Conservatives, New Democrats, Conservative, New Democrat, Conservative, New Democrat, Green, Liberal, New Democrat, New Democrat. So when I think about the number ordering that I'm going to do with this, I'm actually going to mirror what I have here. So I've got Conservatives first, then Liberals, then New Democrats, then Greens. And so I'm going to give the Conservatives a 1, a Liberals the 2, the NDP the 3, and the Greens the 4. So when I go to 2011 winner, uh, what I've got here is the first one is a one, the second one is a three, the fourth one is a one, third one is a one, the fourth one is a three, I have another one, I have another three, I have a four, I have a two, and I have a three, and I, oops, three, and a three. Okay. So there's my like number scheme, I guess, for the winner um, for each particular party. So I'm going to close this for a minute, and then I'm going to show you how to run a frequency distribution or like a really quick table for this. So you can do it by using the command tabulate, um, but we just shorten this usually to tab.
So you would just be tab with the variable name, in this case, winner 2011. And this is the table that I get. So tab winner 2011. So I've got my three ones, my three conservatives. I've got one liberal, I've got five new Democrats, and I've got one green. So the problem is, though, how am I going to remember which party is which? Like, I guess I could always be able to go back and be like, what's the order that I put them in for these columns here? Um, and then try to remember that. But I ought to say, in all honesty, we're never going to remember. So we've got to have a better way to deal with this. And so what I want to do is I want, and I've also got all of these other variables too, where like I've got, I'm going to have to do the same sort of thing. So how am I going to deal with this? Uh, what we're dealing with here are something called value labels for a variable. So variables take on different values. In this case, winner 2011 takes on value one, value two, value three, or value four. And so I just want to put like a substantive label on every single one of those. So I can do this with a single line of command. That would be label value, label define. And I'm going to call it label define party. I'm going to say one in quotes is conservative. And you can see how the color changes, right? So the one, this is the category that can, gets named, and that's the label I'm going to put on it. Two is liberal, three is NDP, and four is green. Okay, so I'm saying to the computer, define this set of labels for a variable as one is conservative, two is liberal, three is new democrat, four is green. So I click enter with that. Okay, the next thing I have to do is label values I want to label winner 2011 with party. Okay, now I'm going to tab again winner 2011 and we'll see what happens. Ha! Huh, look at that. So do you see the things I've just told the computer to do? I told it to, after I made that winner variable, I told it to make me a table of it where it counts the number of uh, winners in each, uh, for each party. In 2011, then I told it to define labels for those parties this way. Then I told it to label winner 2011 with that party, and then I did another table, and now it's a lot easier to interpret, right? I've got winner 2011. Um, now, one way that you can do this in a way uh, to keep good notes for it is if you were to put them into a do file. So I'm going to get into the do file here. And what you can do is take these commands and actually just like write them in here. There we are. And then I'm going to tab winner again. And then uh, what you can do with this in the do file is either click that and you can click do and it just runs it for you as well. And so you can see, instead of me just like, it doesn't get the same kind of way of writing it out in the command if I do it that way, but in the do file, you can see that way. Um, and that's how you can get it there too. Okay. I'm gonna try to generate a uh, new, I'm gonna try to do 2000, the 2008 winner. Um, Mm, do I want to do that through the do file or no, I don't. It'll just be easier to put it in this way. So I'll keep doing it this way here. Okay, so I'm going to do winner 2008. Keep everything this in the same way. Submit. Okay, so I want to do the same thing here as I did with 2011. So 2008 winner is I've got a one. I've got a three, I've got a one, I've got a two, I've got a one, I've got a three, I've got a one, I've got a two, I've got a three, I've got a three. Okay, so I will close that again. Now I'm gonna go to my do file here and I'm gonna say tab winner 2008. Oopsies. So if I were actually to do it that way, um, it would say, I don't know what that is, because that's not a name I know. But if I actually spell it correctly, and then I run it, um, this is what I get. Um, so what I need to do is I need to label this variable, winter 2008, with the same values that I have for winter 2011. So I can do this this way, label values, winter 
2008 party. And then I'm going to click, I'm going to say that I also want it to run a tab, a table of that. Okay, so label values, and then I'll just click do, and poof, there it is. So instead of the one, two, three, I've got the conservatives, the liberals, and the NDP there. Okay. If I wanted to save this do file, this is how I would do it. I would save and tutorial log files. Here I would save it with the same format, Thomas, poly 399, tutorial number one, 17 September 2020. Oof, and there we go. I get the spinning wheel of hopefully not anything going wrong. Okay, there we are. Now, um, let me see, what else do I have in this thing that I need to show you? Uh, so you would do the same process for incumbent. And then for every single one of these other variables here, these are all just numbers. So you would just need to make sure that they were numbers. I would convert um, all of these percentages into uh, like I would make them decimals, so I would decimalize them. So instead of like 10.2%, it would be decimal 0102, 19% would be 0.194, things along those lines. Um, but I would just make sure that all of these would be like put in as, um, as the numbers that they are. So the tricky bit is actually figuring out how to take these three columns and making them uh, numbers but that actually have substantive words associated with them. These are just categories and so we can use any number as a placeholder for the category. Okay, so when you do this, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that all of this is complete and in your data editor. So I have not done a complete job. I would need to fill in all of this information still, um, but I've shown you how to go about doing it up to this point. So your first tutorial exercise is to just completely get this uh, PDF into Stata. Now, what I want you to do then is to save the data set. So again, you would be, you could do file save, or you could just click the save button up here. So again, you're going to be saving the data set with that same format, Thomas Poly 399, tutorial oh, number one, and I will date it 17 September 2020. Uh, and there we go. And so here it will say you've saved it and that's the whole pathway. Now, one thing that, and then it says you that you've actually said it. Now, this is a useful trick for um, uh, this file name. So you've just saved it. Here's your file name. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it, show you how you can put it in um, a do file. Where did my do file go? I don't know where my do file went. Hold on. I'm going to open recent do files. There it is. So that's what I want. So one thing you can do is when you're going to want to use this, you open up a data by saying data set by saying use the pathway. And then at the very end, you will say comma clear. So it looks a bit gnarly. Um, but yeah, you can have a much more elegant pathway than I do, but this way, if you want to open up a data set, uh, from like wherever it's stored in your computer, you just need to make sure that you have this path correct, um, where it is. And then all you have to do is select it and run it and it just opened it for you there. Uh, and then I can still, I can say like tab electoral district. Oops, I need to spell it correctly though. And then, see, it will give you this, but it won't actually be able to do anything for you. Um, one thing you can do is you can tab two at the same time, winner 2011, winner 2008. I don't know if this is gonna be very interesting, but still, aha. So this is kind of ugly. Mm. Uh, that just shows us the like the number of times conservatives won. Like, so here you've got, in 2000, I want to flip that around the other way, actually. There we are. And then I'm going to add column percentages just because that's where I want them to be. Okay. 
Now this is more useful. Uh, you can see here in 2011, conservatives held like three of the seats that they had. Uh, oh, yeah. And so the Greens won one off of the conservatives in 2008. Basically, the NDP won one off the liberals and held four. Uh, the liberals only held one seat, but they only had two. You know, this doesn't tell us tons of interesting things, but that's still just how you would get the computer to like make you a table of two variables with column percentages there. Okay, let me check to see if I've covered everything. Uh, so we've gotten into Stata, started the log file, looked at all the windows, defining variables, value labels, things along those lines. We'll spend a lot of time working with variables, so you'll build a lot of those skills real fast. Uh, enter data, save tables. You ran a couple of frequencies. You saved your data set. Um, the last thing I want you to do is I want you to stop your log when you're done. So you do log, um, close, and that may mean that your log is going to be closed. Uh, so once you close the log, then wherever you've saved it, it's going to be complete. And then the very last thing that you need to do is you need to go to D2L, which is not in this window. And it's not in that window either. Okay, so I'm going to find a new uh, window to go to D2L. I will log in to D2L and I'm going to go to Assessments, Dropbox. As the term progresses, you'll get more Dropboxes. But here, what I want you to do is go to Tutorials. And then, oopsies. Of course, I can't like uh, upload into that. Because I'm the instructor, it like won't let me actually load stuff in. But this is where you would go to like upload all of your tutorial content, and I would upload uh, all three of those files. So the data set, uh, the log file, and your do file. So sometimes all we need is the log and the do file, but for this one, I want to see the data set that you built, and so be sure to upload all three of those. So the data set itself, the log file, and your do file. And then once you've done that, you have successfully completed your first Poly 399 tutorial. And you have also successfully built your first data set in Stata. Congratulations. What a feat. Who would have thought that you would have had that done already uh, this early in the semester? Well done, you. Uh, next week, we're going to start working more closely with variables. And so uh, this really, the only time that we're really spending all the time in the data editor is, is this week. Other weeks, we'll like load up data sets and then start working with them. But it's good to know that you can just go to the data editor or, you know, if you don't actually want to be able to edit data, but just see what's in there, that's the data browser. So the data browser lets you see everything. Um, the data editor lets you change to edit mode and then you can make changes. Um, or you can just browse, basically. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me or one of the TAs know. Good work, folks. I will see you next week.